Now in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to do a pan and zoom effect right here in Shotcut. And it's a lot easier than what I initially thought it was going to be whenever I first saw this effect. So let's go ahead and get into Shotcut and I'm going to show you how you could do a pan and zoom. Welcome to another episode of GeekOutdoors.com. On this channel, you'll learn how to be creative and I'll teach you the tools you need to create. So be sure to hit the like and subscribe button to help the channel create more content like this. All right, so the whole pan and zoom effect, or it's also known as the Ken Burns effects, is basically when you are moving left to right and then you are zooming, but you could also go in up and down as well. So you're basically changing directions and size of the original image or video. And a lot of times people use the pan and zoom effects for images. Now you could also do this for video and I'm gonna show you that later in the actual tutorial. And so this is primarily used because you could actually take a original shot or video that you did and then you wanted to do different angles, motions or zooms with it which you didn't originally have. So that's really the benefit of using the pan and zoom effect. And within this, you are gonna be using keyframes. And so I am going to be showing you some ways to do this the simple way and also a little bit more involved or complex way. And I did also do an entire shotcut tutorial on keyframes as well. So if you're not familiar with keyframes, I'm going to leave that video in the description area below so you can watch that after watching this video. And so with this, I'm going to be showing you the basics of using keyframes to do pan and zoom. But if you want more details, you can check out that video later. And so the first thing you want to do is obviously bring in some clips into your project timeline. So in this case, I have an image and then I also have a video. So let's go ahead and start off with the image. So once you have your image in your project timeline, you want to be sure that you have keyframes available. So in this case, you could go up here to keyframes and click on that. And then you see a keyframes tab down here. Or if you don't see it here or here, you could go up here to view and then go to keyframes and then you'll be able to see those options. Now you want to make sure that you have your clip selected and then you're going to go here to the filters tab and you're going to do a search for size and you see a filter called size position and rotate. Go ahead and double click on that and now we're going to be able to use the pan and zoom effect. So once you have this selected you're going to go ahead and go to your keyframes tab down here or you could go ahead and click on keyframes up here. So now we're in the keyframe section. And if for some reason you wanted to see a view of your keyframes and your timeline at the same time, all you have to do is have your mouse over here on the keyframes uh, tab right here and then move it. So now you could move it and you could have your keyframes and project timeline side by side. So it's really up to you. So if that's something that's going to make it easier for you to edit and see what's going on, you could do that as well but I'm gonna go ahead and bring it back to what it used to be. So I'm gonna drag this timeline up into the keyframes. So now it's back to how it used to be and we'll just move this back here. So now that we're in our keyframes, I'm gonna show you the first and easy way to do it. So in this case, it's gonna start at the beginning position where you have the entire image in its original position and size, but then we're gonna go ahead and zoom in on the position that we want it to be, okay? And so this is going to be done with keyframes. And so this whole simple view involves two keyframes. So here is the beginning keyframe and here's the ending keyframe. And there's going to be animations in between that. And you could also set the first keyframe and then the second keyframe. So these are simple keyframes. So let's keep this really simple. So in this case, uh, I wanted to start right here, which is the original image but I wanted to actually zoom in closer on the bottom right. So one way I could do that is I'm gonna go ahead and go to the end of this. And if you didn't want to manually do this, you could always use this right here, seek forward, and it'll go to the end of the actual uh, clip. And then here, we're gonna go ahead and zoom in. So you could do this a number of ways. You can use the zoom feature right here. You can use a scale, and you could also change the position and size. Uh, by using this as well. You could be precise as well as you could put in numeric values. Unfortunately, with the latest version of Shotcut, I cannot use the scale for the size and position, whereas before I was able to, so uh, hopefully they bring that back. And if you wanted to, you could reset things right here. Just go ahead and reset to default. 
and it'll reset it to what it was before. So uh, that is one way to do it. The other way is you could actually do this manually. I like this a lot better because you could dynamically adjust it. So if you notice right here, there's a circle right here in the middle. If you choose that, you could move things around, but then you could also change the zoom factor right here. There it is, you could zoom in. And you can still use this up here as well. So it's gonna be a combination of those. And so say for example, I wanted it to zoom in right here at the bottom, right? So I'm gonna go zoom, and then I'm gonna move this around. So that's kind of where I wanted to end up. And the thing is, if for some reason you zoom in too much and you cannot see uh, the actual options available, uh, where you could actually select it and move it around, you could go down here to the bottom and there's gonna be a toggle zoom. So right now the default is zoom fit. You could zoom 10%, 25, 50, all the way up to 1000%. So if you wanna zoom out, 10% will zoom out the most. So that way you could see everything. So I had this problem before where I zoomed in too much and I didn't see my options to you know dynamically or manually adjust things. So this way you could always see everything no matter how far it zoomed in. And so 10% is the farthest you could zoom out. And if you can see everything, you could go to zoom 25%. So in this case, I want it to show up right here at the end of the video. And once you have it where you want it, you could go back to zoom to fit. And so now, if you notice, the entire video looks like that. So uh, that's a problem because I wanted to start out with the zoom out and then zoom in here. And so the way you're gonna do that is by animations. So if you go here to this first keyframe, and you drag it out right here. So what's gonna happen is it's gonna start out and then it's gonna eventually zoom into that area that you want. So that's a real super easy way for you to do the pan and zoom effect. So if you notice, uh, once it's zoomed in there, it stays in that position. And now some other things you can do with simple keyframes is if you actually move this around, this first keyframe animation, if you shorten it, it's going to be a lot quicker. So it'll go a lot faster to get to that point. And also, if you wanted to go ahead and zoom back out to the original position, you could go to the second keyframe right here, drag this. And so what's going to happen now is it's going to go ahead and animate it back to its original position and size. And then another thing that you could do is you could also set the end of the filter. So in this case, you want it to end here. So we'll go ahead and end it right in here. And so what's gonna happen is if you play this, we'll play this, it zooms in. And then right here where there's nothing happening, there's no animation, it's gonna stay in that position. And then finally, it's gonna go ahead and zoom back out to its original size until it gets to the end of the actual filter effect. So we'll go ahead and let that play. And then after that, it's gonna remain in that original size and position of the image. So now that I've shown you how to use simple keyframes, I'm gonna show you how to do pan and zoom using more advanced keyframes, which I think is the best way to do this because it does give you more control if you wanted to do things that are, you know, more than just simple panning and zooming. For serious YouTubers, check out TubeBuddy the premier tool news at geekoutdoors.com. Get more done today by checking out the affiliate link in the description area below. All right, so now let's take a look at using more advanced keyframes instead of using the simple keyframe feature. And so by using this, you're gonna have a lot more control on your pan and zooms and many other different effects. And so first thing we're gonna do is simulate what we did earlier, where we're basically zooming into a particular position. And so in this case, we're gonna go ahead and put our playhead right here. And now, instead of going ahead and doing what we did previously, we're gonna go up here, and you're gonna see a use keyframes for this parameter option. So there's keyframe options for size and position, but there's also one for rotation. And so the first one we wanna do is right here. We'll go ahead and use keyframes for this parameter. And if you notice, there is another feature down here for size and position. So this allows you to control your keyframes, and it's not limited to just the two that's available with the simple keyframes. And so now that you have that, you could actually adjust the size of position where you want. So I'm gonna show you a few things first. So say for example, you added this keyframe and you went ahead and adjusted the size of position. So we're gonna do that here. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. 
and we're going to go ahead and manually do this. I'm going to zoom in and then I'm going to move this right here. So let's zoom in a little bit more. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead and go back to the zoom to fit view. Okay, great. This is great, right? But the problem is with this other way of doing it, you've pretty much set the entire image to be in this particular position and size. So it's going to take the whole keyframe value and set that for the entire image, as you can see here, which isn't what we want, because what we want is to start off with the original position and then zoom into this. So this is going to be a little bit different from what we did earlier, uh, but this is going to teach you more about how to use keyframes. And so the way you fix this is at the very beginning of this actual clip, you want to add a keyframe. So say, for example, you're over here somewhere. And so what you're going to do is you're going to go up here and there's an option to go seek backwards or you can manually move it using your playhead. But I really feel that that's not as precise. So now that you're at the beginning, you can add a keyframe. So now you're going to be using all the size of position keyframe options here instead of going up here. So if you go down here, you could go ahead and add a keyframe at playhead. So now we have a keyframe here. And now let's go ahead and adjust the values. Now, if you wanted to reset everything to what it was originally, you can go ahead and use the reset to default. So now it's going to be at the original size and position and also zoom factor as well. So if we were to play this, now we have an animation because at this keyframe point, there is different properties for the size and position. Whereas at the beginning, it's different. So that is the power of keyframes. And at the same time, if you wanted to make this quicker, it's very similar to what we did with simple keyframes where you wanted to have quicker animation to that point, you could actually manually move this keyframe. So now if we play this, it's going to go a lot faster, zooming and panning to the position that we want. So that's why you need to set a original keyframe at the beginning because this is your beginning position and size and this is the ending position and size and all of this is done with keyframes and if you notice here you could go from one keyframe to another so that way you are precisely at the keyframe that you want okay so now that you have a better understanding of how pan and zoom works using keyframes we can now actually adjust the pan and zooms the way that we want. So say, for example, I want this to pan at the beginning from the left and zoomed in, and then I want it to slowly pan over to the right. So this is done a lot, especially with product reviews where you have an image and it slowly pans from the left to the right. So the way we're going to do that is on our original keyframe, we're going to go ahead and uh, move it around. So I wanted to start like right here. Uh, but obviously I want it to be zoomed in because right now we're going to see these uh, black spaces right here with the image. So we're going to go ahead and uh, zoom out about 25%. And then I'm going to go ahead and scale the image. And what I want to do is like pan from left to right. So this is the beginning of the shot. And then eventually I want it to go here to the right, but I'm going to move this a little bit more. And so that's what I want. So we're going to go back to the beginning. I'm going to go back here, zoom to fit. And we'll play that. And there is a simple left to right pan. And a lot of people use this. And whenever I figured this out, this was great because now I could do pan and zoom effects, even though I didn't have it that way in the original video. And since it's doing this, in a video editor, you could control precisely where you want the camera angle or shot to be using the pan and zoom. And now other things you can do is you could add other keyframes. So let's go ahead and add another keyframe here. And I want to change the angle yet again. So in this case, uh, we're going to go ahead and go to this keyframe and we're going to move this around. I'm going to go ahead and zoom back out 25%. So for this one, uh, Let's go ahead and adjust this. So I want it to go, let's just say to the top right somewhere, like right there. Okay. And I'm just having fun with this. Just kind of show you what you can do with this. 
So let's go ahead and go up here. And then eventually I wanted to zoom back out to its original size. We'll add another keyframe here and I'm going to reset the values here. So it's back to its original size. Okay. So we're going to go back to the beginning and I'm going to go ahead and use the zoom to fit and let's go ahead and watch that. So it starts off with the left to right pan. And then after that, it's going to go ahead and move up to the top right. And then finally, it's going to zoom back out to its original position and size. So as you can see there, uh, once you learn how to use these keyframes, you can do practically almost any type of pan and zooms uh, that you want. And at the same time, there's other things that you could do within Shotcut. If you notice, there's additional options here. There is a size mode. So the default is fill, so it tries to fill the entire screen. If you use fit, it will change uh, where the actual video image is. So the entire image, uh, it changes based upon what you use here. Uh, there's also distort, there's horizontal fit, and there's vertical fit. So you could play around with this. But typically, I just leave these options the way it is and do everything through keyframes. So that's how you would do all of this pan and zoom uh, using keyframes. And now I'm going to show you how you could do this in video. And so I'm not going to get into detail with how to do this because you already know how to do this with images and the principles are the same. So let's go ahead and move over to video and do some pan and zoom. All right. So now let's go ahead and apply pan and zooming to videos. And the whole principle of doing pan and zoom is going to be exactly the same for images or video. And so obviously on this one, I'm not going to go into too many details because we just did that with images. And so we're going to go ahead and select our video clip. We're going to go to filters and we're going to add our size position and rotate filter. And then we're going to go into our keyframes tab. And so I'm going a lot faster in this because we just went through it with images. And so I'm going to go ahead and add a keyframe here at the beginning. And then also I'm going to make this a lot shorter. I don't want this to go to the entire video. So we're going to go ahead and set the end of the filter right there. And so if you see here, we have our beginning filter, which starts at the beginning. But I'm going to have some fun here. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in a big time. <laughs> and we're going to do something really annoying. We'll just start right here. Yes. Great angle. <laughs> and then here, I'm going to add a, another keyframe right here. And this one, I'm going to reset it to default. And then here, we'll go another keyframe. And we'll go ahead and go right here and I'm going to zoom in. Yes, this is a Oscar worthy editing right here. Here. <laughs> and then uh, finally, we'll add one more keyframe here. And once we're here, we're going to zoom in in another very awkward place. <laughs> Let's go right there. Awesome. That is going to be an Academy Award winner. So let's go ahead and go back to the beginning. Let's play this. So we start off right here. Zoomed in very uncomfortably. Then zoomed out. Fast zoom in. To the right. And finally, uh, zoom back out one more time. Uh, to my beautiful big nose. <laughs> and that is it. That's how I'm using pan and zoom, but in the case for video. And as you can see, you can have a lot of fun using this. And it also add a lot of variety to your videos, especially if you wanted to get, you know, different views and angles that you didn't originally have. And that is it on how you would use pan and zoom for both images and videos. And as you can see, by using keyframes, there are pretty much limitless ways in which you can adjust your videos or images. And so I highly recommend that you experiment with this until you get to the point where it's just really easy for you to do. So if you actually had any thoughts on this or any other ways in which you do the pan and zoom effect, be sure to leave that in the comments area below. And if you did want to see more of my shortcut tutorials and tips, I do have an entire playlist. I'll leave that in the description area below. So as always, if you did get value out of these videos, 
be sure to share, like, and subscribe. And if you're a creative geek like me, and you want to get exclusive access to more content that I don't put out here publicly on my YouTube channel, then join my Go Content Creators Group, where you're going to get content like this and more for all the creative geeks out there. And the best part is, all of this is free. Simply head over to the link below, check on the page, and sign up for my Go Content Creators Group.